Hello students, welcome to my channel Engineers Academy. Now we are going to solve this problem from chapter 6. The problem says that determine the force in each member of the truss and state if the members are in tension or compression. So we are going to solve this problem by using the method of sections but before that we have to find the reactions at the support. So here at joint D we have the pin support so we will have two reactions. So let's say this is dx and we will have one another support. Let's say this is dy. And since at joint E we have the roller support, so we will have only one reaction and let's say this is ey. So now to find this dx, dy and ey, we need to consider this whole truss. And we need to consider the equilibrium conditions since the truss is in equilibrium. So now if I apply the summation of the forces along the x-axis is equals to 0 if this is our positive x and y direction. So as we can see that only dx is acting along the x direction. So this means that dx is equal to 0. So this means that the horizontal component of the reactions at point D is 0. So we can remove this. Similarly, if we apply the summation of moment about point E equals to 0, so as we can see that this dy is producing the counterclockwise moment about that point E. So I will write dy and the moment arm of this dy from that point E is 3. So we need to multiply it with 3 and it is producing the counterclockwise moment. Similarly, this 4 kN force is producing the counterclockwise moment about that point E as well. So we have to write plus and this is 4 and the moment arm of this 4 kN force from that point E is 3 meters as well. So we have to multiply it with 3. And similarly, this 5 kN force is also producing the counterclockwise moment about that point E. So we will write plus uh, 5. And the moment arm of this 5 kN force from that point E is 3 plus 3. So we will multiply it with 6. And this is equal to 0. Or if I bring this dy terms to the other side, so we will have minus 3 dy. So from this equation, we can find dy. So that dy will be 4 times 3 plus 5 multiplied by 6 divided by minus 3. So dy equals to minus 14. dy equals to minus 14 kilonewton. So the minus sign means that the assumed direction of dy is not accurate, dy is acting vertically downward. So we can replace it as well, right? So dy is acting like this. It is in the negative y direction. So now we can write that dy magnitude is 14 kilonewton. Now we will start our solution from uh, joint D. So let's assume that that CD member is in tension, right? So I let me draw the tension force. So if CD member is in tension, so the, the FCD force will be acting away from this joint D, right? So let's say that this is the force in that CD member. So this is FCD. And let's say that this DE member is in compression. So FDE will be acting towards this joint D. So this is FDE. So now if we apply the summation of forces along Y equals to zero, if we apply the summation of forces along Y equals to zero, if we consider this joint D, so we need to resolve this FDE into its component. So this FDE is making this angle theta uh, with the horizontal or with the FCD. So we need to find this angle theta. So from this triangle, from this CDE triangle, we can find this theta. So we can apply tan theta. So tan theta is perpendicular, which is CE, and the perpendicular length is 5, and the base is 3 meters. And if we take tan inwards, then we will be able to find that theta. So we need to find tan inwards. 5 divided by 3. So this gives us theta equals to 59.04. So theta equals to 59.04 degrees. So now we can resolve this FDE into its components. So it will have two components. One of its components will be 
acting like this that is towards the like this towards the positive x axis and it will have one another component will be acting like this so this one will be this one will be the cos component and this one will be the sine component so if we apply the summation of forces along y then uh, this uh, sine component of fde is acting vertically upward this is fde sine of theta so we will write plus f d e sine of theta and theta is 59.04 minus that d y which is 14 and this is equal to 0 and if I bring this to the other side of equation so we will have it like this so f d e is equal to 14 divided by sine of that theta so 14 divided by sine of 59.04 so FDE equals to 16.33. So FDE equals to 16.33 kilonewton. And since the FDE force is acting towards the joint E, so this means that it is the compressive force, or this means that the DE member is in compression. Now, if we apply the summation of forces along x equals to 0 at joint D. So as we can see that this FCD is acting in the negative x direction. So I will write minus FCD and this component is acting in the positive x. It is the cos component of FDE. So we will write plus and FDE magnitude is now 16.33 cos of 59.04. So this will be equal to 0. And if I bring this to the other side, so FCD will be equal to the cos component of that DE. So FCD equals to 16.33 cos of 59.04. So this is 8.40. So FCD equals to 8.40 kilonewton and since the fcd force is acting away from this joint d so this means that uh, the cd member is in tension similarly we can solve this joint e now since uh, here we, we we know this fcd that fcd will be acting like this so fcd is known but the force in these three members is unknown. So we can solve joint C before solving joint E. Since we have only two equations. So we can, if we have more than two unknowns, so we cannot solve this joint. So first we need to solve this joint E. So at joint E, we, we know the magnitude of this FDE. So FDE is compressive. So it will be acting towards this joint E as well. This is that FDE. And let's say that uh, this AB is in compression, let's say, as well. So that FAE force will be acting in this direction. And let's say that this CE member is in tension, let's say. So we will have that force like this. So this is FC, uh, FCE. This is FDE. And FDE magnitude is now known, which is 16.33 kilonewton. And this one is FAE. Now we need to resolve this FDE into its components. So we need to find this angle. So if this angle is theta, then this angle is also theta. So this means that we will have one component of FDE in this direction this is fde remember this is fde so this will be the cos component we can write that this is 16.33 cos of that theta which is 59.04 degrees and similarly it will have one another component which will be acting vertically downward so it will have one component like this this is the sine component of that fde Similarly, this FAE, we need to resolve this as well. So we need to consider uh, this triangle. We need to consider this triangle to find this angle 
of if e e with the horizontal let's say that this angle is alpha so we can find this angle alpha by applying tan alpha so tan alpha will be equal to this perpendicular so this perpendicular of this triangle is 5 minus 3 so this is 2 divided by the base so this base is 6 so alpha will be equal to 10 inverse 2 by 6 so 10 inverse 2 divided by 6 and this gives us the angle of FAE with the horizontal equals to 18.43 so alpha equals to 18.43 degrees now we can resolve this FAE into its components so it will have two components it will have one component like this this one will be the cos component and it will have one another component which will be acting vertically downward like this so this one is the sine component now if we apply the uh, if we consider that joint e and if we apply the summation of forces along the x axis is equals to zero so we have this FAE, this is FAE cos of alpha, so it is acting in the positive x direction, so I will write plus FAE cos of alpha, alpha is known which is 18.43 minus this cos component of FDE, this is 16.33 cos of 59.04 and this is equal to 0. Or if I bring this to the other side of the equation, so we will have the equation like this. And FAE will be equal to 16.33 cos of 59.04 divided by cos of 18.43. 16.33 cos of 59.04 divided by cos of 18.43. So this gives me FAE equals to 8.85. Eight point eight five kilonewton, and since FAE is acting towards this joint E, so this means that the AE member is in compression. Similarly, if we apply the summation of forces along y-axis is equals to zero, so we have this EY which is acting uh, vertically upward. We need to find this EY as well, right? So I forgot this to find. Uh, so we can find it if we if we consider the whole truss and if we apply the summation of forces along the y-axis is equals to zero. So then, as we can see that this EY is acting vertically upward, this five kilonewton force is acting vertically downward, and this four kilonewton force is acting vertically downward, and this dy is acting vertically downward, which is fourteen. So this is equal to zero. So this is. From, from this equation, we can say that EY is equal to uh, 5 plus 4 plus 14. So 5 plus 4 plus 14 is 23. So EY is 23 kilonewton. So you people need to find it in the start of this problem. I forgot to find it, but this EY equals to 23 kilonewton. So now if we apply the summation of forces along the y-axis equal to 0 at joint E, then this EY is acting in the positive y, so I have to write plus 23 minus this uh, sine component of FAE, so I will write minus FAE is 8.85 sine of alpha and alpha is 18.43. This FCE, FC is acting in the upward direction which is unknown. And this uh, sine component of FDE is acting vertically downward in the negative y direction. So I will write minus 16.33 sine of 59.04. And this is equal to 0. So we can find this 23, 23 minus 8.85 uh, sine of 18.43 and plus this this is minus you can write this as minus 16.33 into sine of 59.04 so 
so this gives me 6.20 approximately so i can write that 6.20 plus fce equals to 0 or we can say that fce equals to minus 6.20 kilonewton so again the minus sign indicates that the assumed direction of fce is not accurate so this means that fce is acting towards that joint e so this means that the ce member is in compression so we can say that fce force magnitude is 6.20 kilonewton and it is in compression now once we have found this fce now we can proceed to this joint c so at joint c this fce will be acting vertically downward uh, sorry since it's a compressive force so it will be acting towards this joint c so we will draw it towards that joint c and its magnitude is 6.20 kilonewton similarly uh, we can assume that let's say that this cf member is in tension let's say this is in tension this is f cf and let's say that this uh, bc member is in tension as well right so we will have this f b c acting like this so this is f b c now we will consider this joint c before considering the summation of forces along x and y we have to resolve this f c f into its components and it is making let's say beta angle here so we need to find this beta angle so as we can see that if we consider this triangle so the the base is equal to 3 meters and this perpendicular is equal to 3 meters so this means that this beta angle is 45 degree if we apply 10 beta so that it will give us 45 degree angle so this angle is 45 degree now we can resolve this fcf into its component so it will have one component which will be acting in this direction and similarly it will have one another component which will be acting in this direction like this so now if we apply the summation of forces along y axis is equals to zero so as we can see that uh, this sine component of fcf is acting vertically downward so i will write minus fcf sine of 45 degrees and this 6.20 this fce is acting vertically upward so i will write plus fce and fce magnitude is known which is 6.20 and this is equal to 0 and if i bring this to the other side so we will have minus 6.20 minus will cancel out and we can find fcf 6.20 divided by 6.20 divided by sine of 45 so this gives me 8.76 so fcf is equal to 8.76 kilonewton and since the fcf force is acting away from that joint c so this means that that cf member is in tension so we need to write t here since we have uh, 8.768 so let's say that this is 8.77 let me write it is 8.77 kilonewton now if we apply the summation of forces along x equals to zero so as we can see that this fcd is acting in the positive x direction and its magnitude is 8.40 this is 8.40 we have determined it so i will write plus 8.40 and this component is acting in the negative x so i will write minus and this is the cost component of this fcf so i will write 8.77 fcf is 8.77 cause of 45 degrees and this fbc which is acting in the negative x as well so i will write minus fbc and this is equal to zero and if i bring this to the other side so we will have fbc equal to the summation of both of these so i can find it 8.40 minus 8.77 cause of 45 degrees so this gives me fbc equals to 2.20 so fbc equals to 
2.20 kN and again FBC is acting away from that joint C so this means that the BC member is in tension. Now after this we can uh, find the solution by considering joint F and joint B. So first I will consider uh, joint F. So at joint F, uh, this FCF will be acting away and its magnitude is 8.77. So this is that FCF and now its magnitude is known. Its magnitude is uh, 8.77 kilonewton. And let's say that uh, this AF member is in tension. Let's see. So if it is in tension, so the force must be acting away from that joint F. And let's say that this BF member is in compression, so its force will be acting vertically downward. So this is F, B, F and this is F, A, F. Now we can resolve this FCF if this angle is 45 then this angle is also 45 degrees this is 90 degrees right so we can resolve this fcf into its components it will have one component which will be acting in this direction this one will be the sine component and this it will have one component which will be acting like this this one will be the cos component so now if i apply the summation of forces along the y-axis is equals to zero so as we can see that this FBF is acting in the downward direction. So I will write minus FBF and this cost component of FCF is acting vertically upward and FCF is uh, 8.77. So I will write plus 8.77 cos of 45 degrees and this is equal to zero or we can say that FBF is equal to the cost component of that FCF. So this is 8.77 cos of 45. So this is 6.20. So FBF is 6.20 kilonewton and FBF is acting towards this joint F. So this means that BF member is in compression. Similarly, if I apply the summation of forces along x equals to 0. So as we can see that uh, this sine component of FCF is acting in the positive x. So I will write plus and this is 8.77 uh, sine of 45. 8.77 sine of 45 degrees minus this FAF. It is acting in the negative x. So you will write minus FAF and this is equal to 0 or we can say that FAF is equal to the sine component of that FCF. So this is FAF. So this is 8.77 sine of 45. So this is also equal to 6.20. So FAF equals to 6.20 kilonewton and FAF is acting away from this joint F. So this means that the F member is in tension. Now to find FAB we will consider joint B. So at joint B we know this FBC so that FBC FBC magnitude is 2.20 kN. So let me write that this is and it is the tension force so it will be acting away from this joint B. This is 2.20 kN. Similarly, this FBF is known and FBF is 6.20 kN and it should be acting towards this joint B since it's a compressive force. So this is FBF and FBF magnitude is 6.20 kN. And let's assume that this AB member is in tension. So its force will be acting away from the joint B as well. So now again if we consider this ABF triangle so again this angle is 45 since this length and this length they are equal. So this means that if this angle is 45 degree then this FBF is making a 45 degree angle with the horizontal. So we can resolve this FBF into its components. It will have one component like this. 
and it will have one component will be acting vertically downward like this and this angle is 45 degrees so this is f bf cos of 45 degrees now if we apply the summation of forces along the x axis is equals to 0 at joint b let me write joint b and if we apply the summation of forces along x equals to 0 so as we can see that this 2.20 force uh, this fbc force is acting in the positive x so i will write 2.20 minus this cos component of fbf so i will write minus fbf cos of 45 degree and this will be equal to 0 and if i bring this to the other side so we will have the equation like this so fbf will be 2.20 divided by cos of 45 so 2.20 divided by cos of 45 degrees so this gives me 3.11 so fbf equals to 3.11 kilonewton and fbf is acting away from the joint b so this means that the bf member is in tension so sorry this is not fbf this one is fbf right this is this is f a b so this is f a b cause of this is f a b cause of 45 so this is f a b so f a b equals to 3.11 kilonewton and the a b member is in tension now if we apply the summation of forces along y everything is known so that will check our calculation whether our calculation is accurate or not so let me apply the summation of forces along y equals to 0 at joint b so as we can see that we have this 4 kilonewton force which is acting in the downward direction plus this 6.20 force this is uh, fbf and this sine component of fab which is acting vertically downwards so i will write fab is 3.11 sine of 45 degree and this should be equal to 0 so this is minus 4 plus 6.20 minus 3.11 sine of 45 this is approximately equal to 0 since the difference is due to the rounding off in values so this gives us the check that uh, all our calculation is accurate so I hope you people would have understood this problem solution. Kindly subscribe my channel if it helps in your learning. Also like this video if you people want me to solve such more problems from engineering statics by Hebler.